Very good. Okay, so um, we want to start new where we left off. Uh, is there any pressing question that you feel like you would need before we start? Okay. Uh, feel free to come by office hours. I have office hours today, 4 to 5, for example. Homework to do at midnight. You might have a last minute problem. Nobody's been coming to see me. I'm beginning to feel lonely. Um, so uh, free, to, free to come by, um, if you like. All right, so um, here's what I think we're going to do. So today we're going to finish up on kinematics, and we are going to discuss a new, uh, a new concept of energy units that um, we will use throughout the rest of the course. And um, I will start by writing down the equations that we derived last time. And now we're going to look at how do we actually use the equations to solve for velocity or momentum or, or energy. So um, you remember that the old classical equations, P equals mv, E equals 1 half mv squared, are now replaced by uh, relativistic equations. So we'll just write those down real briefly. Um, so the first thing we found, we said that there was a quantity called the total energy. And the total energy was the kinetic energy plus the rest mass energy, m naught c squared. And furthermore, this was equal to m naught c squared, the total energy, divided by the square root, 1 minus, now I'm going to start using abbreviations. I can abbreviate this even further and call it m naught gamma times c squared. Right? So we've introduced the idea of gamma as the Lorentz factor, uh, 1 over the square root of um, 1 minus v squared over c squared. Uh, this, equi this equ expression is what we have for the, for the total energy. Um, let's see, so total energy is kinetic plus, potential, plus rest mass energy. Uh, oh, by the way, if you did have a force field present, we would add in a potential energy term here, right? Right now we're talking about a particle that is in free motion. If it was trapped in a well or it was under the influence of a Coulomb force field, we would have to include potential energy. But clearly, uh, for this case, we don't, we don't have to do that. Um, so that's an expression for the, uh, for the, for the total energy. Uh, notice also that, uh, oh, did I forget something here? Yeah. So now I can solve this for kinetic energy, and I can get that the kinetic, kinetic energy is equal to gamma minus 1 times the rest mass energy, m naught c squared, where m naught is what we call the rest mass. Okay. And let's see, we had another expression for, um, <coughs> for total energy, and the other expression for total energy involved the square of the total energy. We said that the total energy squared could be written as P squared C squared plus M naught squared C to the fourth, or M zero C squared quantity squared. Uh, this was, a, this was a, another expression we had. And also remember that momentum still has a familiar form, but because the mass is no longer a constant, uh, we have to modify that. So what we said was that the momentum was equal to m naught, uh, the moving mass, which is the square root of 1 minus beta squared, um, times v. No, times v. Um, I'm trying to think of another way. Right, yeah. Another way. Another way to. To, to, to write that, but I think I'll leave it. I'll leave it from there for now. Um, yeah. So the, these are the. So I have an equation for momentum in terms of mass and velocity. It's just that you know it's more complicated now, right? Because beta is equal to v over c. Uh, so it's, that, that part's a little more complicated. Uh, what else can I do? There is one more thing. One more equation we can add that might be useful in a future sense, and that is we can derive or show that beta, if you know, for example, the momentum and the energy, we can, we can show that beta is equal to PC 
divided by uh, the total energy, ET. Okay. Um, and I will write that down, but basically I can show that by using um, uh, this expression, this expression for the total energy, and I can use this expression for momentum. But right now I'll just add in there, we can, we can look at the derivation later. The bottom line of all of this is that, or the important takeaway is that there are four variables in these equations. There's mass, there is velocity, there is momentum, and there is kinetic energy or total energy, if you want. Right? But there are four, four. If I know any two, I can calculate the other two from these equations. And that's what we want to work on today, is how we actually go about uh, how we actually we go about using them. Now, one of the things that, uh, before we, we go too far, I want to point out is that, um, is that in, the, in the examples, in the course material that we are going to have between now and the end of the semester, we are going to be talking about particles that are either electrons, they're protons or they're neutrons, right? N is equal to neutron. Okay. Um, these masses are very, very small masses. Right? Uh, I'll give you an example. The mass of the electron is equal to um, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay? It's clearly a number that's very, very small. And furthermore, C is a very, very large number which is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Uh, meters per second. Now, what I probably want to convince you of is that if you try to use, oh, 10 to the eighth, I forgot, 10 to the eighth, right? If you try to now calculate, and, uh, and, I'll, and if I have some momentum P, which was equal to, let's say, for example, 3.2 times 10 to the minus 27, kilogram meters per second. Example, example, right? This is, this is just an example. Um, and I try to calculate the kinetic energy using this equation. I guarantee you, you're gonna make a mistake, right? Look at this, C of the fourth, right? C of the fourth, I'm gonna have to pick 10 to the eighth to the fourth, that's 10 to the 32. I've gotta take three to the fourth power, that's 81. I've gotta square the mass of the electron with an exponent of now becomes minus 10 to the minus 62 multiplied by this number squared and then multiply it by c of the fourth. Plus I got to add another term in there and then I got to take the square root. You begin to see it's not easy. It's not easy. It's just like, you know, and, 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 and the problem is that we're using the wrong units. Okay? It, 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 it's equivalent to me telling you or asking you how many millimeters is it from here to New York City? Right? You just, you just, you, you say, what? <laughs> what? Right? So we've, we, we have this problem that we're dealing with quantities that are minuscule, horribly, terribly, terribly small, and we're trying to calculate numbers with something. And the problem is it's the wrong units. Right? If we find the right units, it's going to get, it's going to make it really simple. Right? So uh, these are all units that we call MKS. Some of them will call you, may know them as SI units, International System International, uh, or M MKS. Uh, I'm sorry. Did I say it right? Yeah, meter, MKS, meter, kilogram, second. Um, right? These are, these are the units that you learn. We do, you know, meters is the length, kilogram is the mass, uh, joules is the energy, uh, seconds is the time. And everything derives from that. Right? So what can we do that will make this a little bit easier? Well, um, first of all, I think what we'll do is talk about the energy units. Um, we need to find another way to express energy. So right now, what we know is that energy is in units of joules. Right? Energy joules, and that's a newton meter. That's a newton meter is e is equal to a joule. And we want to find a different way of doing that. So one of the ways we're going to do this is we're going to uh, look at what happens, how we how we make these particles 
that we're going to be dealing with, um, how we make them go fast, how do we provide a way to make the velocity become high or, uh, or, or manipulate them in some way. So what we can do here is to, let's draw a picture of a heated filament. And uh, we, 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 we pass some current I through the filament through some voltage source. And uh, the electrons uh, come off with a very, very tiny velocity. And this is called an electron gun. Uh, there's very common applications of how you make electron beams by heating up the filament and electrons boil off of the surface. Um, but we can make them go fast or make them uh, uh, speed them up by accelerating them across a voltage. So let's suppose that between this filament and this will be a plane with a hole. So this will be a, um, um, a, a conductive material which we can identify as, for example, an anode. And let's say that we apply a voltage, an accelerating voltage across here that will, um, that will, will keep them, uh, that, will, that will give them some, some push, right? So basically there's a couple ways we can do this, but uh, essentially by applying a voltage, so let's say we have a one volt potential uh, between the, uh, the, 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 the conductive, um, material we call the anode and, and the source. Then what is going to happen is that this electron is going to accelerate across here. Uh, why? Because uh, the cathode becomes negatively charged or the filament becomes negatively charged. Um, the, this one, this side will become positively charged, for example, and the electrons will accelerate across there. Okay. So a voltage is basically a battery is going to charge and, and basically the electrons will go across. How much uh, energy will an electron acquire if, if, I, if it accelerates across one volt? In other words, I want to know that when it reaches the hole that it's going to pass through, what is the kinetic energy? Kinetic energy equals what? Right? I'm going to get to the other side. Right? So how, do I, how, how can I calculate that? Well, what I can do is to go back to the original definition of a volt. Right? What is a volt? A volt is a joule per coulomb. One joule of energy gain per coulomb of charge. Okay. That's the definition of a volt. It's a joule per coulomb. Anybody seen this before? Anybody not seen this before? Okay, one more. Time. Has everyone? If you've seen your, if you've seen this before, shake your hand yes. And if you haven't, you do this. Okay. Everybody has good. Okay. So this is a volt. All right. So, uh, how much charge is on the electron? Well, the charge on the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Everybody remember that? That's the charge on, or have you heard this? Mm -hmm. is the charge on the electron, right? So the amount of energy gained by the electron is going to be equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 uh, joules. Okay? That's the amount of energy gained and that's going to be equal to one half m v squared, right? And this is the mass of the electron. And so, if I know the mass of the electron, which I have written down right here, right, then I can put that into this equation and solve for v, right? Everyone see that? You can, you can right? So, uh, this is this is what we this is what we have. Um, so. What we can do instead, what we do instead, is simply say the energy gained, the kinetic energy, is equal to the charge on the electron, which we call E. So it will be E 
times one volt. And we're going to call that new unit of energy the electron volt, or 1 eV. Okay. And we now know that 1 eV is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So if we ever want to get back on familiar ground, we know how to connect with our old system of units. Okay. This, is, this is the value of, of the kinetic energy. Similarly, and of course, this will be equal to 1 half mv squared. Right? Now, let's suppose I put down 10 to the 10,000 volts here. Right? Well, that's easy. Now what I do is uh, the kinetic energy is now equal to 10,000. 10 to the fourth electron volts. Right? And if I want to know what that is in joules, I'm going to take 10 to the fourth, and I'm going to multiply that times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay. So this would be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. Right? Clearly, the more voltage I apply across here, the faster the electron will go. It's going to have more kinetic energy. It increases linearly with the voltage. And I have a new unit I'm going to call the electron. Right? When the electron passes across here with 10,000 volts, it will acquire an energy of 10,000 eV. Or sometimes, in, because we're going to be using a lot of range, range of different eVs, we can say this is 10 keV. Right? Or we can sometimes use million electron volts, and we can say this is 0.01 MeV. So we can use EV, KV, million electron volts, giga electron volts. Right. But the basic unit is the electron volt. Okay. Are there any questions? I'm, people are kind of like looking puzzled. Yes. Is that 10 to the fourth? Yeah, it's a 10 to the fourth. Yeah, 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fourth, right, right, right. So that's, which is 10 kV, which is 0.01 mV. Okay. Okay, so th this is our new unit of, of energy, kinetic energy. And we're going to see this over and over again as we do the hydrogen atom and quantum theory and all the other aspects. So I'll just put it out there right now. Um, this handles one problem. Okay, you you would clearly agree, I think, that it's easier to write down the energy as 10 kV than 1.6 times 10 to the minus 15. And particularly if I've got to square it and add it to something and take the square root, it's just easier. Okay, now we have to do something about the mass term. The mass is still a very small number, gets multiplied by c squared, then we're going to square the whole thing, then we're going to add it to some other momentum, and then we're going to calculate the energy. That's also too, too hard with these numbers, right? So let's come up with a different system of mass units. Right now, the mass unit is the kilogram, right? So let's write down what are the uh, the masses of the three primary particles uh, in, in kilograms and in our new in, in, in our new units as well. So we're going to make a table here and we'll say in this case this is mass and this is going to be in kilogram and in this column over here on the top uh, I'm heading I'm going to calculate this for protons. I'm going to calculate this for elect neutrons, or what's yeah, neutrons, I guess. Neutrons, and I'm going to calculate for electrons, and I want to know, so this will be the masses, right? I want to know what their masses are, masses. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Well, we have to take some data that we have given to us from experience. So for the proton, uh, this it turns out to be uh, 1.673 times 10 to the minus 
27 kilograms. So I'm not going to write the units out. The units is right here. Right? Uh, the neutron is actually pretty close in mass. It's 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27. And the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay, those are the three. Um, now, notice that whenever we do a calculation involving mass, uh, it's usually multiplied by c or c squared. Right? Um, this momentum equation is a little bit of an exception, but I'm, 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 I'm actually going to do a little trick here to show you how I can even make that as mass times c squared. Let me multiply through by c. Notice that when I have p here, I have a c. So there's P and C always come together. So let me just multiply P times C. I'll tell you why in a minute. This becomes M naught times, um, times C divided by the square root. One times beta squared times V. Now I'm going to multiply by C and divide by C. If I divide this by C, I have V over C, which is a beta. Then I get a C squared here. So this becomes M naught C squared times square root, one minus beta squared, times beta. Okay. So you notice I have a C squared that multiplies the mass here too, just as I do up here. So anytime I do a calculation on relativity, or even I can show you non-relativity, mass I can always multiply by C squared. So all I really care about is what is the product mass times C squared, which is what we're going to calculate next. So let's calculate uh, m naught c squared in joules. So uh, m naught c squared. So I'm going to multiply this number by c squared. c squared is 9 times 10 to the 16th. Right? So I'm going to multiply by c squared, and I'm going to get uh, it's going to be 1.506 uh, times 10 to the minus 10. And for the neutron, I'm going to get 1.508 uh, times 10 to the minus 10. And for electron, I'm going to get 8.19 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay. So all I've done is multiply it by c squared. Okay. And, but, that means that the answer is in joules. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to convert to EV, because remember, our kinetic energy is now in electron volts. Kinetic energy is in, these are my units, my new units for, for, for kinetic energy, is, is called the electron volt. I also want to have m naught c squared in electron volts, because I'm going to add these two together, right? I'm going to, I'm going to add, I'm going to have an equation involving energy here, with a mass term here. This should be, also in units of EV. So if I've expressed it in joules, I can express it in EV because there is exactly 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per EV. So I'm going to um, divide these numbers by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and I'm going to get m naught c squared in units of EV. And this is 938.3. This is 939.6. Oh, by the way, I, these are actually million electron volts. So I need to actually change this a little bit. <clears throat> 939.6 and then 0.511. Okay, so these, when you go to look up the mass of a particle to do a calculation, you do not need to use these numbers. These are the numbers you need to know. And there are only three of them. There's a mass for the proton, a mass for the neutron, and a mass for the electron. We only have three particles that we're dealing with here in this course. So these will be provided for you. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. 
I'd rather and much easier to learn these numbers than to learn these numbers. Right? Makes 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 calculations of just like a whole lot whole lot simpler. Um, okay, so um, uh, that's that's that that is I think a good starting point for. Um, looking at, at some calculations. We may probably need to make one more comment about momentum. So in momentum, let's suppose that uh, I'm, I'm solving one of these equations. Let's say, for example, uh, I have this equation right here. And I want to solve for momentum. Let's suppose that I know the kinetic energy of the proton. If I know the kinetic energy of the proton, I can solve this for, for mo if I, I can solve this for momentum, right? I mean, if I know the kinetic energy here, I can solve this for momentum. So how would I do that? Well, let's see. I would say, um, I would say kinetic energy plus rest mass energy, m naught c squared, um, quantity squared is equal to p squared c squared plus m zero c to the fourth, m zero squared c to the fourth, right? So let's solve for pc. pc is equal to the, uh, so I, let's see, I bring this to the side and take the square root. So pc is equal to the kinetic energy plus m naught c squared, uh, quantity squared, minus m zero c squared, and I'll just write it this way, quantity squared, and that's pc, right? Notice that if the mc squared is in units of electron volts, and kinetic energy is in units of electron volts, pc is going to be in units of electron volts, right? Uh, in other words, right, this is my new expression for mass, m zero c squared, given by these numbers, then everything in here is in electron volts. Okay. So the PC, my answer PC will be in electron volts. So this will be units of electron volts. So I can define a new unit of momentum my new unit of momentum P is the is is in, in units of E V over C. Because anytime I have a P in my equation, I'm going to multiply it by C. And as soon as I do that, I have electron volts. Okay? So anytime I solve for momentum, it'll be an E V over C. I'm always going to multiply it by C, and then I get E V. Okay? So PC is in units of EV over C. Right? If you want to know what is an EV over C in MKS units, then I can calculate it for you because what I can do is say that one EV over C, well, what is an EV? An EV is 1.6 times 10 to the minus <clears throat> 19 joules divided by uh, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and the result is 5.28 times 10 to the minus 28 kilo. You all recognize this as, as momentum? The product of mass times velocity, right? That's what one EV over C is. It's that many kilogram meters per second. This is not a very useful uh, unit. 10 to the minus 28 kilogram meters per second doesn't give me much, well, it's hard to calculate with, and I certainly can't visualize what, what a 10 to the minus 28 kilogram meters per second is. Right? It's way too small. But I can visualize or start thinking about numbers like 1 EV over C. I can even relate those numbers to velocity if I want to, because they're a momentum unit. Right? And we'll, 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 we'll talk about that in some, in some, in, in some examples right here. But this is the new unit of momentum. Okay, uh, so let, let's try a uh, couple mm -hmm. 
see. I'm trying to think if I can find one here I like better. Mm -hmm. I better start off, start off simple and go hard. Um, okay, well, let's go, let's work an example. Suppose I want to calculate what is, oh, by the way, the final term, velocity, is our answers will be for velocity, answers will be in terms of beta. which is the fraction of the speed relative to light. Right? So if I solve for beta, I can get V. Right? If I solve for beta, I can get V, and we're gonna use, so, so, so beta is our, is our unit, new unit of velocity, how fast is it going relative to the speed of light. Uh, e over C is our new unit for momentum. Uh, EV is our new unit for, for mass times C squared, and uh, EV is our new unit for kinetic energy. Okay, so let's, let's, let's try an example. Um, what is, uh, what is velocity and momentum, or speed I guess, velocity and uh, momentum of electron with a kinetic energy equal to one million electron volts. One million electron volts. 10 to the six, okay, it's 10 to the six EV. That's the, that's the unit of kinetic energy, all right? Wonder what, 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 how do, what's, the, what's the speed of a particle that has this much kinetic energy? Okay. Um, well, let's see. There's, there, there's, there's a couple ways we can go about doing this. Um, um, I'm trying to think. Can you hear me? Probably the simplest way. Well, first of all, let's write down what we know about the, about the electron. So for the electron, uh, for the electron, we know that uh, the the m zero c squared is equal to a 0.511 million electron volts, right? So, um, uh, that's, that's, two pieces of information. Okay. Um, we also know that by adding the kinetic energy to the rest mass energy, so we know that the total energy is equal to 1.5 one one million electron volts. Um, and so we need to either solve for velocity or we need to solve for momentum. I choose to, to, to solve for momentum first. There's, there's a couple ways you can do this, but um, I, th I think solving for momentum to me kind of like was the first way or thing that struck out. And here what I do is I look back here and say, oh, I just calculated the total energy, I can get the momentum, right? I just calculated ET. So uh, let's solve this thing for, uh, for, for momentum. So I get that this is PC. So PC quantity squared plus 0.511 quantity squared is equal to 1.511 quantity squared. And so I solve this thing for PC, and I get that PC is equal to 1.42 million electron volts, or P is equal to 1.42 MeV over C. Okay, so that's the momentum of, of an electron. Now that still may not mean very much to you, but at least it's a number that doesn't look like 
10 to the minus 27. Okay. The, the units are getting into the ballpark of something we can actually work with and, 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 and visualize. Furthermore, I solved this equation very simply. If I were using this with these units up here, and I first of all had to square this number and multiply it by c to the fourth, and then add something to it, well, you get the idea. I'm going to make a mistake. So now I've had numbers that are, that are much more manageable to work with. These three numbers for the mass times c squared are a lot easier to plug into these equations, as I just did right here. I put this value of mc squared over here in order to solve for momentum. Okay. Now, there's a couple ways I can solve for velocity, but I'm going to use the simple one that I just derived or, or stated over here, that uh, velocity is PC divided by the total energy, both of which I know. Right? So uh, I can get that the velocity, or beta, is equal to PC, so it's 1.42 MeV uh, divided by... Um, the total energy, which is 1.511 MeV. Notice that beta has to be less than 1, right? Because if I get an answer where beta is greater than 1, I made a mistake. Right? Can't be, can't be, you know, velocity cannot go faster than the speed of light. Right? Um, okay, so, so I solve this and I get that this is equal to 0.94. Right? That's my answer. If I want to know what it is in meters per second, I multiply this number, this is 0.94, right? So 0.94. If I want to know what this is in meters per second, just multiply this times th by 3 times 10 to, 9, 10 to the 8. Any questions? Does 50% does, does of it make sense? I mean, you, you see why we're doing this, right? I mean, that's important. Now, unfortunately, some of the problems in the textbook use energy units, and some still use MKS, even though they're dealing with electron. I'm sorry, I can't help that. I tried to choose problems that were all, when I give exam problems, will all be in these units. That we're not going to use kilogram meter per second. We're not going to use joules for energy. Okay. So, um, but to the extent I can possibly use these units in problems involving electron, proton, and neutron, I will. Okay. And certainly, as I said, for exam problems, everything will be in these units. So we'll, we'll continue to use that. Okay. Are you ready for another one? Are you having enough fun that we want to try it again? <laughs> okay. Let's try another. One. So let's suppose we have a proton has velocity, proton uh, has velocity v equal to 0 0.6 times the speed of light c. And we want to know what is, uh, what is its kinetic energy and what is its momentum, P. Okay, so again, there's usually more than one way to solve this problem, but I'm gonna pick one to show you. Uh, because we have several equations we can use, and we can use them in different orders, you know. And remember, I've got, uh, I've got an equation for momentum, PC, and an equation for momentum, an equation, and two equations for the total energy, right? Here's an equation for momentum. This is an equation for total energy. This is also an equation for total energy. Uh, either one of these and etc. You know, I, I, I can, I can do, do, there's a couple ways to solve this, but I'm going to just show you one. So let's say, uh, well, so first of all, what I, my, one way I might think about this is um, on, on the route to solving this is. Um, I'm, I'm going to think of it this way. Uh, what if I do it this way? Kinetic energy is equal to gamma minus 1 times m naught c squared, right? So knowing its velocity, 
I can, I can calculate gamma, right? So if I calculate gamma, I've got the kinetic energy. Right? Um, I also know that PC uh, can be, is also equal to beta times the total energy. Right? So I could actually, in the second step, once I've got the kinetic energy, I can calculate the total energy. Once I've got the total energy, I can calculate P. So that's one route to get there. Now, I, you will have homework problems in, in, in part three of the thing. There'll be eight or nine, and you'll be, you'll be practicing these up the wazoo. So um, you'll, you, it, it, it only comes by, by experience and when working more problems so that it looks, looks familiar. So, um, OK, so let's see if we can do that. Um, so this one's pretty easy. I think let's calculate gamma. So gamma is 1 over the square root of 1 minus uh, 0 0.6 quantity squared. And this is equal to uh, 1.25. Remember, gamma always has to be greater than 1. Beta always has to be less than 1. So uh, make sure that when you do it, you get something that, that, that's, that's, that, that satisfies those. And then, uh, let's see, so that's gamma. OK, great. So now I can just say that I, I know what mc squared is because I know it's a proton, right? So, so what is m0c squared for a proton? It's 938.3. Yeah, 938.3 million electron volts. So I now uh, can say that the kinetic energy is equal to 1.25 minus 1.0 uh, times 938.3. And um, if I solve this, I get that this is equal to 234.6 million electron volts. So that's my answer for kinetic energy, is uh, 234.6 MeV. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I have. And now I can go on to, uh, there's a couple ways I can get momentum. Notice I could use this expression I had before from this equation. So this equation right here. So I would, a um, couple ways, let's see, I can do this. So this would be, I would call this equation, if I were to label these by equations, I'd call this equation four. I would call this equation three. I would call this equation two. And I would call this one equation one. Two, three, and four. Okay. I'm calling this whole thing one equation, by the way. This part right here, one equation. But anyway, so I could use equation four because I have the kinetic energy. Let's uh, let me. We, 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 we can do that, right? Oh, I know the velocity. So so P C is equal to beta is 0 0.6. So I have 0 0.6. And the total energy is 234 plus the total energy, I mean, plus the rest mass energy. I have to add, to get total energy, I have to add kinetic plus M0C squared. And so that number is going to be times 234.6 plus 938.3. And this is in units of MeV. So I get that this is equal to, uh, PC is equal to 704 MeV. It means that P is equal to 704 MeV over C. Okay? So that's my new, uh, that's my uh, expression. Now I could have also gotten it another way once I have the, uh, the total energy. Uh, I could say that uh, PC 
squared is equal to the total energy squared minus m naught c squared quantity squared. Right? So um, if I add the the kinetic and the rest energy together to get the total energy, uh, then I get that this is equal to 1173 MeV quantity squared minus 938.3 MeV quantity squared. And so I get that PC is equal to the square root of that, or which is also equal to 704 MeV. So that's another way of getting it. I could, I could use equation number two to solve for PC instead of equation number four. Okay. Right. So that's basically how we do it. Um, probably um, if someone gives you the kinetic energy, let's say you're given the kinetic energy and you're given the mass, right? which is usually what you're, you know, that's often a case. Uh, first thing we want, we might say, what, what, is, what is velocity? So what's beta? Right? Beta equals what? Uh, What's a, what's a route to find uh, what, uh, what, what, what beta is? Um, um, easiest, easiest path there. Because oftentimes that may be the case. You might actually be given the kinetic energy of a proton or kinetic energy of, a, of an electron. You go, well, well, what speed is that? We can understand speed much more, right? I mean, speed is a concept we, we, can, we can relate to. Even if it's close to the speed of light, I can understand 20% the speed of light, 40%. Those numbers are somewhat comprehensible, right? But so we might want to actually know uh, uh, how to uh, uh, how yeah how how to get that. Um, well, let's see. Um, clearly, this looks like the most direct path right here, right? If I know kinetic energy and mass. Wouldn't this be an easy way to get velocity? Yeah, I think so. Right? So uh, this is the, what I would use. So I would say, in this, in this case, what I would do is use um, uh, that, that equation. I would use equation. I would use that the kinetic energy is equal, to, I would, no, let's write it that way. Yeah, the kinetic energy, let's write it that way. I would solve for gamma, right? So basically, first I would solve for gamma, and then I would solve for V. So I would say uh, gamma minus one is, is equal to the kinetic energy divided by M naught C squared, which, yeah, right? So that's, that's why, if, if this was a proton, for example, let's suppose this is a proton, then I would go ahead and I would say, okay, it's sort of like this would be 938 MeV. And then I have to put in the value for here. Um, uh, let's suppose, for example, I might, just, you know, I'm trying to think what the best way to, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, at this point I'm just repeating, I think, myself, but, but you put in the value of the kinetic energy, then solve for gamma. And then use the fact that gamma squared equals one divided by one minus beta squared. So I can invert that and I get that one over gamma squared is equal to one minus beta squared. So I can say that beta squared is equal to one minus one over gamma squared. Okay? So the route I would choose is is going right here, and then I would take the square root, so I would say beta is equal to the square root of one minus one over gamma squared. Okay? And that, that's my answer for velocity. Right? Uh, now it often comes up that, um, that you may want to know, when, when, do I use, when do I use relativistic equations, and when can I use non-relativistic equations? So for non-relativistic equations, um, 
we have we have a different expression. Uh, we have, for example, that um, the kinetic energy is equal to one half m v squared. Um, and I will say one half m naught v squared. And the because the mass does not change with velocity in the Newtonian world. So this is equal to m naught times v. Right? So when, when can I just use these equations? Right? That's, that's an often a question often, often answered, uh, often asked. And the best guidance that I can give you is that um, uh, it, depend, it depends on your level of accuracy. But generally speaking, if the kinetic energy divided by the rest mass energy, m naught c squared, which is equal to gamma minus 1, okay, if that is greater than 0 0.1, then I would use relativistic equations. In other words, once gamma becomes significantly bigger than 1 by, let's say, 10%, I think that's a good that's a good red that's a good flag for for uh, for, 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 for for doing it. Similarly, um, um, I would I would say that, uh, and you can show that if if this means that gamma is greater than or equal to 1.1, that beta is greater than or equal to about 0 0.4. I think. Once you get above either 40 percent the speed of light, or you get above uh, uh, you know, 10%, the kinetic energy is, is, is at least 10% of the rest mass energy, then, then you need to start using relativistic equations. Uh, oftentimes, in the case of an exam, I will tell you, you know, you, know use, you, you can use a non-relativistic equation. Which brings us to the next point, which is, um, how would I apply energy units to the Newtonian equations. I mean, is there anything special about what I've done that in the energy units that only applies to uh, that only applies to uh, relativistic equations? And the answer is no. I can do the same trick as I did before. What I'm going to do to use that is I'm going to uh, take the kinetic. I'm going to put the kinetic energy. Remember, anytime I have a mass, I want to have a c squared. Right, because that's that, that's that's a number that I that I can look up and I know. And anytime I have a velocity, I want to have a v over c, because beta is a much more convenient number to calculate as well. So what I'm going to do is say I can write this as one half m naught c squared parentheses right times v over c squared. So this is one half m naught c squared times beta squared. All right. So by the way, see it like this. Okay. All right. So I can now I can also calculate the velocity of a kinetic energy a lot easier than I could before. All right. I don't have to use masses that are ten to the minus twenty seven kilograms. I've got the mass in energy units. I've got mc squared in energy units. And my equations only involve m mc squared. So at what point would this equation start to break down? Well, uh, you recall that what I had said was that once the um, kinetic energy becomes at least 10% of the rest mass energy, you need to probably start using a relativistic equation. And so we can we can we can estimate that. So let's say, for example, uh, I'm dealing with electrons. So let's suppose that uh, the electron has mEc squared equal to, and now I'm going to use k, 511 k. Right? Use 511 k. Then my what I would say is that if the kinetic energy for an electron, ek, for electron. Right? becomes greater than 51.1 keV, then use relativistic equation. Okay, that's, that's, that's the way I would do it. Let's work an example. So let's say, for example, I have an electron with 20 keV. 
What's the velocity? What's the velocity? So what's the velocity of uh, what's the velocity of of 20 keV electron? K 20 keV equal to ek electrons. Well, uh, it's certainly less than 10 percent of the of the rest mass energy of the electron, which is 511 keV. So I'm going to use my non-relativistic equation and say that 20 kV is equal to 1 half. Now for m0c squared, I'm going to use uh, the rest mass energy of the electron. So this is 511 kEV times beta squared. Okay, so I get that beta is equal to the square root of 40 divided by 511. Somebody do that on their calculator. That's about the roughly the square root of 0.8, which is probably about 0.9. Is that right? And you can't be right. Now I must have made a mistake here. Wait a second, wait a second. 40, 40 kV, 20 kV. Ah, let's see. One second. No, that's not quite right. No. Somebody can do that. So what's the square root of 40 divided by 511? 0.279. 0.279. Let's call it 0.28. 0.28 is, is, is the velocity, right? Okay. So you can see, I bet I can do this a lot faster than you could with MKS units. Well, the numbers are a lot easier. They're just, they're just a lot easier to work with. What is the momentum? Okay, so what's the momentum of, of this electron? What is the momentum of the electron? Well, um, this is my equation, right? Uh, let's look at PC. Since we want to use energy units, PC is, is equal to uh, I'm M not C, but I'm going to multiply and divide by C squared. So I'm going to get M not C squared times V over C. So this is equal to M not C squared uh, times beta. So the momentum non-relativistically for an electron uh, with this kinetic energy is going to be equal to uh, 511 times 0.28. Can somebody do that on the calculator? What's 511 times 0.28? What? I'm sorry? 143.1. 143 MeV. So P is equal to 143.1 MeV over C. Oh, did I do KeV or KeV? It's KeV, didn't I? Sorry. This should be KeV. Why? Because 511 is KeV. Okay, so that, that's, that's the momentum. That's the momentum of an electron with a kinetic energy of 20 kV, or 20,000 electron volts. 